When it comes to sunglasses in the mountains, there's a lot to take into account. There's the four different categories, polarization, mirror casing. So in this video, I'm breaking all that down to help you decide what type of sunglasses are best for you and your situation in the mountains. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Chase. This is all about preparing your mind, your body and your gear so you can get outside, enjoy the mountains, make the most of it and come back safely. And in this video, we're talking about sunglasses and this is the one thing that I wouldn't want to be leaving at home if I was going above the snow line. If it's a bright day and you don't have sunglasses or if you have the wrong type of sunglasses, you can be snow blind like that and if you're snow blind, you're in serious trouble. So how we're going to approach this is I'm going to show you a couple of pairs of sunglasses that I have and I'll tell you the situations that I've used them in. I'll also talk about some of the sunglasses that I've had in the past, why I did like them, why I didn't like them to help you decide which ones are going to be right for you. So firstly, we're going to get into the number categories, which is probably the main thing you need to understand about sunglasses, particularly if you're going to be on a glacier. So if you are going to be above the snow line on a sunny day and particularly on a glacier, then you're really going to want to get category four sunglasses. So category four is the highest level of eyewear protection and this is only used in special purpose sunglasses such as those used in mountaineering. So really, really bright environments. And the main reason why this is so important is because when the sun is shining on the snow on a very clear day, not only is it super bright from the sun itself, but you also get the reflection back from the snow from the ice and it, it comes up from the ground. And when you're up in the mountains above the snow line, it's likely that you're gonna be up there for a number of hours, perhaps all day. So you could be spending hours and hours and hours in direct sunlight copying it all the time. So having the correct eyewear is really, really important. So if you are going above the snow line, I would recommend that if you're gonna buy a pair of sunglasses now, get a category four pair of sunglasses. But what about category three? Is this something you can get away with? Well, yes, essentially. I have worn a pair of Category 3 sunglasses in the Himalayas. Uh, they were a pair of Oakleys, and I took them on a month-long trip while I was climbing Amitablam to a 6,000-something metre mountain in the Himalayas. We are up there for a month, and luckily it wasn't that sunny. A lot of the days were overcast, but those were very high-quality uh, Oakley sunglasses. They weren't specifically made for the mountains, but they were category three and they were good enough. Having said that, when you have a category four pair of sunglasses and a category three and you change directly to category four, you notice the difference immediately. So you, you might not notice when you're just wearing category threes, but as soon as you put cat fours on, your eyes just relax. <laughs> it is so much darker. It is so much easier to see where you're going. You can pick out areas of like potholes in the snow and you're just generally able to see better and you're more relaxed and there's not so much strain on your eyes. So for quite a while, I got away with wearing Cat 3 sunglasses, but I'm telling you, if you're gonna buy a new pair of sunglasses now, definitely get Cat 4s because the difference is just ridiculous. I wouldn't go above the snow line with anything less than a Cat 3 though. Certainly Cat 1 and 2 is not enough for being above the snow line. You very well could end up snow blind or at least damaging your eyes a little bit. So I would highly recommend going for Cat 4 at the very least Cat 3. So now I'm going to get into a couple of different sunglasses that I've got to show you some of the details. These ones are the first ones. These are from Valen Classics. This is the Heron Glacier 2.0. Uh, these are a category four pair of sunglasses, meaning they are super, super dark. They only let in 6% of the light. So not only are the lenses really dark, but this kind of shield around the outside that you can see stops light from coming in from the side. And that's obviously going to make a little kind of cocoon around your eyes. And it's super relaxing when compared to wearing a cat free pair of sunglasses. The last thing you want to be doing is squinting and straining your eyes when you're trying to concentrate on climbing or crossing a glacier. So this pair of glasses in particular I picked up recently. I've only had one trip with them and that was a very, very sunny trip in the middle of summer on Peak de Neto. You can see the whole video here, but this was really the first time that I got to experience wearing these sunglasses and I'm super happy with them. I was a little concerned at first about if that would block my field of vision, if there was some sort of avalanche or a rock fall, but I figure I'm gonna hear that probably before I see it. So. 
I mean, as long as you are paying attention, you should be fine. I certainly wouldn't wear them driving. You wouldn't want to be wearing these on the road, but obviously these are built specifically for the mountain environment, so they're absolutely fine. But that's kind of the main difference between this kind of really super classic old school style and the newer ones that have a much wider field of vision to allow you to see more. So that's one thing to take into account. They do kind of limit that vision. However, on the flip side, these look f***ing cool, <laughs> especially since these are mirror case lenses. When you take photos with these glasses, you get the reflection of the mountain. They look absolutely incredible. I love old school, vintage, classic style, and Valent have absolutely nailed that look. You should go and check out their Instagram. The other reason I like this brand is because they have a strong environmental policy. Firstly, when they send you the sunglasses, it's completely plastic free, no packaging at all, just a cardboard box and that's it. They're also getting involved with plastic free July. So far to date, they've cleaned up over 15,000 kilograms of plastic from the ocean through this global worldwide movement. And I love to support companies that have strong environmental policies that are helping us clean up our own waste and crap from the mountains, from the oceans, so love to see that. One thing to take into account when you buy these really kind of dark sunglasses is that on cloudy or evening kind of conditions, the lenses could be a little too dark, which is why there's actually a second version of this pair of sunglasses called the Heron Mountain 2.0. I believe that is a category three lens, so it's not quite as dark as the Glacier version. I think it's also a little bit cheaper. One thing you might want to take into account when you're looking for mountaineering sunglasses is that you don't want to lose them. You don't want to drop them. I like to take a backup pair just in case I drop my primary pair down into a glacier or something because if you are left on a bright day without sunglasses, like I said before, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Failing that, of course, you can get those sunny savers to put on the ends, but because of this curve here, you really don't need that. So the question you might be asking yourself is, well, are these polarized? They're clearly mirror cased, but do they have polarization? Well, the answer is no. And actually, you really don't want to be looking for polarization in mountaineering sunglasses. The reason why is because from a safety perspective, polarization interferes with the light reflected from the ice. And that means that icy patches are very difficult to identify. So these I primarily got for mountaineering and skiing, especially skiing. I want to be able to identify where there's a potentially icy patch coming up. And if I have polarization, I'm not going to be able to recognize that. <laughs> I'm going to hit an ice patch and I'm probably going to fall over. So for alpine, mountain, mountaineering activities, it's definitely preferable to not get polarized sunglasses. The category four lenses cuts down glare regardless and in combination with the side shields, they eliminate pretty much any kind of glare that you're going to experience, especially on the Cat 4 version. So polarization is something you really don't have to worry about and something you might want to avoid, especially if you're skiing. Another thing you're going to want to take into account when you're looking at sunglasses is anti-fog. So if you're climbing and skiing, there's nothing worse than your sunglasses fogging up. It could potentially be very dangerous. So definitely look for a pair of sunglasses that has anti-fog. The Heron uh, Glacier and the Heron Mountain definitely do have that. So that's another thing that you want to look out for. I was a little bit concerned with the face shield. I thought that might've really kind of blocked the airflow coming through but that wasn't a problem at all. So they've done a pretty good job there. So I originally got these glasses because they're incredibly classic style. I thought I was gonna to have to compromise with a few kind of features, but in the end, I have everything I needed. The only concern was just the field of vision, but that's something I'm kind of willing to sacrifice to look super fucking cool. All right, next pair of sunglasses that uh, I'm gonna show you are a little bit sporty and I'm gonna clean these first. Talk about uh, my running sunglasses. They are from Sirocco. The model is called Barcelona. I pretty much bought this model just because they were called Barcelona. That's where I live. And these are super light polarized lenses. They're incredibly panoramic. So you really have no blockage of field of vision when you're wearing these. 
They are anti-fog as well. They have these anti-slip bands, which is handy when you're running. So that's something that you might want to take into account as well. And the good thing about these is they have interchangeable lenses. They only include this lens, but there is three or four other different types of lenses. You can have completely clear ones, orange tinted. Um, these ones are polarized, so I wouldn't want to be wearing these skiing. I'd be going for my Valent Classics in that case. The main reason I got these is because they were very cheap. They are only around 35 euros. I got them on sale and I just wanted a pair of sunglasses that I didn't have to worry about too much. I could just throw in my bag. You know, if I broke them, then so be it. They're only 35 euros. I've never been one to really lash out and spend heaps of money on sunglasses because I'm useless and I just lose and break things all the time. I basically got these for long distance running, potentially for hiking, although they are a little bit too hectic for a hike. So I tend to wear something a little more casual if I'm just hiking. Which brings me to my third pair of sunglasses, which are really the only pair of really expensive sunglasses that I own, which are the Clubmaster from Ray-Ban. So these are obviously really high quality lenses, very stylish. And these are the glasses that I got away with wearing for quite a while. I'll wear these hiking. I have worn them skiing, although they are polarized, but these are just my wearing around the city and everyday kind of sunglasses. So. The thing with Ray-Bans obviously is that a really high quality lens and these are actually quite dark so they will do the job when you're out hiking and potentially skiing. So you can get away with wearing just regular sunglasses for a certain type of activities but again I highly recommend that you get category 4 if you're going above the snow line. So some other sunglasses that I've had in the past, uh, the Oakleys that I had were good enough, they did the job for that trip. I've also used the Jolbo Explorer 2.0s or maybe the version beforehand. But again, I haven't seen those in years. They were very expensive, something like 180 Australian dollars or more. So that's why I've preferred to go for something a little bit cheaper. I think with the wear and tear that you put on these things in the mountains, spending insane amounts of money is not what I want to do. I want to find something a little bit more affordable but still very, very good and ticks all the boxes in terms of being uh, category four, having mirrored casings, giving a good field of vision, having a nice color and a nice tint to relax and take the strain off the eyes. So that's what I'm using in the mountains at the moment. I hope this has helped. If you've got any comments or models that you've used in the past that you want to recommend, put it in the comments section below. I'll see you on the summit.